Welcome back to another building system tutorial. In this one, I'll be going over how to create a simple selection system for your objects. I've also decided to try and make these tutorials modular, meaning that you can watch the first one and then add on with these scripts I am making here, out of order or even excluding some. Or you can watch them all in order for just a nice tutorial series. Anyway, I think that's enough rambling, let's get on with the tutorial. So before we get started with this tutorial, you're going to need to download an asset from the Unity Asset Store. The link is in the description. All it is is a simple script that adds an outline to an object. And after you've done that, you need to go to Window Package Manager, My Assets, make sure this is My Assets up here, and you would search Outline, and it's this one. And press the Import button right here, wait for it to import. And you don't need to have the sample scene or anything like that, you just need the script and the materials it comes with. So now that you have that, we can get started with this tutorial. We can make a new script. You can call it something like selection or select manager or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter too much. You can open it up in your text editor. Now we need to make a new variable. Make it public game object selected object. This will be used to store whatever object you're selecting, like in the future if you want to have a script that modifies whatever you're selecting or you want to get some data from it, which we will do you can use this variable. Now in the update method, we need to make sure like when we click, it fires a raycast to see if it hits an object. And if we do, it'll select that object as long as it has a certain tag. So we just need to code that up pretty quickly. Okay, so this simple bit of code, you are going to have an error right now before we, because we haven't added this method yet. But what this is, in very simple terms, is doing is checking if we click the mouse button. If we do, it fires a raycast from wherever your mouse is. And if it hits an object and the game object's tag is object, it will select this object. And now we need to actually make this method so that it will select the object. We'll start with going out of the update, go private void select and in the parentheses we need a new parameter called game object just something like object like that now we have that we need to add it a little bit of code into it to actually add the system for selecting something first we need to check if the object we are getting is equal to the selected object so it doesn't run through everything if you've already selected the object don't actually need the brackets here Then we need to make get a reference to the outline if it has one. So outline outline equals object dot get component outline. Make sure you've downloaded that package. And if outline is null, this is checking to see if it has one. And if it doesn't, we need to add one. But if it does, we just enable it. It's pretty that simple. And then after we've done all this, we need to set our selected object variable right up here to the object that we passed through this method. And that's pretty much all the code we have for this method so far. There will be a little bit more later on. So we, now we need also a way to deselect our objects so that we just don't have them selected all the time. And you can make this one private as well, but there might be things you want to, if you ever want to call them from another place, you would just make them public. So selected object dot get component outline. And we're just going to disable the outline. So we just set done enabled equals false. And then we also set selected object equals null afterwards. It won't work if it's the other way around. Now we can call this method in two places. First of all, we need to put it here. If selected object does not equal null, so if we actually have an object currently selected when we call the select method already, we just need to call deselect. So that if we click on another object, it'll deselect the one you currently have. And also, we need to, it would be nice if we could deselect this by pressing the right mouse button. So let's just do simple if input.get mouse button down. And then we put a one in there. We call it deselect. It's easy. Now we can go back to our scene and we should be able to select and deselect an object and it will add the outline to it. Now to make this a little more visible in our scene, we should probably change the color of the ground so we can actually see the white outline. So just make a new material in your materials folder or wherever you want. Call it something like ground. 
and just make it something other than white. Uh, just a nice dark gray is fine. And now we should probably also change the color of the skybox so we can tell the difference a little easier. So like, make a nice blue or light blue or something like that. Now we need to make a new game object in our scene. Call it something like select manager. Doesn't matter too much. Put on your script. And also, before we do this, make sure all your prefabs for this all have the tag object. If you did the last module for checking the placement, they should already all have this tag. But if they don't, create a new tag by hitting add tag, creating the tag, and then adding it to all these objects. If they don't have the tag, this won't work. So as long as we go to play, we can now see that we can select our objects perfectly. And they are sinking through the ground a little bit, but that's fine. It's just placeholder. And sometimes you might get errors if you right click without an object that's actually selected. So we can just put in uh, ant, two and symbols and then put selected object does not equal null. Now we should probably actually do something with what we have selected, otherwise there's no point to selecting objects. So we need to create a little UI panel that can act as our interface for interacting with whatever we have selected. So just create a new uh, UI panel, call it selected object panel, doesn't really matter what you call it actually. We can change the size here a little bit, let's go into this to see it a little better. Uh, change the color to just drag it down. And now under the this thing we need to create some text, text mesh pro. Uh, we can center this, alt, click the top one, so it's at the top, object name, and set auto size to true. Then underneath these, we're going to need to create two buttons so we can interact with our object. So do button text mesh pro, call this one delete, now press alt again, and pl uh, click down to the bottom one. Maybe raise it up a little higher than that, maybe like 20. Change the color to like a nice soft red. Maybe change the size if you want. It doesn't really matter what these values are, as long as they are there. And let's d duplicate this button. Call this one move. Increase the Y position by good. Maybe like 65. Change the color to a nice green. And then rename both of the text in these buttons to do what they are supposed to do. Say delete. And move. So now we have this panel, but we don't actually have to do anything with it yet. So let's go create some logic for these buttons. Let's go back to our select script. So first thing we need to do is at the top of our script, write using TM Pro. So this will actually allow us to use the text mesh pro stuff. Then we can make a public text mesh pro UGUI and call it something like object name text. Then we need another one, private building manager, building manager. Very simple there. And to start, we need to actually assign our building manager. So building manager equals game object dot find. And whatever you called your building manager in your scene, then dot get component building manager. And there you have it. That's how you would assign that. And now we need to create new two two new voids. Both of them have to be public. Move. So after we create this method here, we actually need to go into our building manager script and change the pending object variable to public. If you don't do this, this script can't actually access it. So now if we go to building manager dot Pending object equals selected object. So this will start to move our object to our mouse and also it will change the materials. Now we need public void delete. Now this one's a little little bit more complicated, only because we want to also call deselect when we uh, delete the object, otherwise it will say something is still selected and it just will cause problems down the line. So it is actually a whole three lines. Wow. Game object, object to destroy, it doesn't really matter what you call this, could even just be like G or something, equals selected object. Then we need deselect, and then 
destroy. Object to destroy. The reason we have to do this is because if we call deselect without before we do destroy like selected object or something, there won't be a selected object anymore because remember we're setting it to null, and so we'll get an error and it won't actually work. So we need to set the variable to the selected object, then call deselect, then destroy the object. It's a little more complicated, but it works. So now that we made these two methods, we need to make use of our other variable, object name text. So on select, we can just do it down here. Object name text dot text equals object dot name. Now, since your prefabs ha are instantiated, they will have the little clone bit, but there are ways to fix that. Uh, if you want to answer to that, I can tell you in the comments. Now, if we go back to our scene, we need to set everything up properly. In our select manager, we need to assign the object name text right here. And our delete and move buttons need to be assigned the select manager. Then we need to set the proper methods. So the delete button will get the selection.delete, and the move button will get selection.move. Now if we hit play, we see that we have our UI. We can place an object. It shows the name here. We can move it, and we can delete it. And of course the name works with all the other ones. But, as you just saw, I got a little error when I tried to delete when I didn't have anything selected. So, we should probably make the UI only show when there is an object selected. Now, let's go into our script, and in select, or actually no, and in our script, we need to create another new variable. Call it object UI. Oop. Then in select, we need to set object UI to true. In deselect, we set it to false. It's as simple as that. So back in Unity, we go to our select manager, take the selected object panel, and also we need to set this to be not active when we start the game because we don't actually have any objects selected when we start the game, do we? So now we have this and we select, it sets this to active, I can move it, delete it, it disappears. I can do this, move it, deselect it, it disappears, delete it, disappears. It works! And that pretty much concludes this tutorial. You can now select objects in your scene, it adds an outline to them, and you can move and delete them. So with that, I think it's time to end this video. Thank you for watching. This series has been my most popular by far, getting almost 2,000 views on the first tutorial. But I need to keep this short, so here's the outro now.